Okay, tonight for homework, we're continuing on talking about subtracting with mixed numbers when we need to regroup. It's practice book page 133. Sorry, I'm still on freeze here. So practice book page 133, lesson 6.7. Uh, the first one is done for you, but I'm going to continue and do the next two with you. Now, if you're looking at the estimate, we've worked with the estimate a lot. So in this case, 4 and 1 half would say 4 and 1 half minus 3 and 5 6. You're going to ask yourself, is that closest to 3, 3 and a half, or 4? In this case, it's closest to 4. So the estimate here is just 1 half. Now to do the actual problem, we're going to set it up vertically. Now it is subtraction, so it's important to make sure you keep these numbers in the same order. So you have 4 and 1 half minus 3 and 5, 6. So these first few steps are exactly the same as everything we've been talking about with common denominators, adding and subtracting fractions, and adding and subtracting mixed numbers. So the first thing we're going to do is bring over that whole number and set up our new equivalent fraction line. So in this case, the denominators are 2 and 6. If you need to find the least common multiple of 2 and 6, you can write them out on scratch paper. Or you may know, if you know your times tables already, that 6 is going to be the first number they have in common. Now, they do have higher numbers in common that you can use, but you're just going to have to do more simplifying at the end. I like to use the smallest number because I want to do the least amount of work. So, I'm going to go ahead and change both denominators now to 6. So, I'm going to ask myself, I went from 2 to 6 in the denominators. How did I do that? Well, 2 times 3 gave me 6. So, now I'm going to multiply by the same number at the top. 1 times 3 is 3. So my new equivalent fraction to 4 and 1 half is 4 and 3 sixths. Now in the second number, stick 6 stayed the same, so 5 can stay the same. So up until this point, this is everything we have done with adding and subtracting mixed numbers. It's the same exact process. However, when we get to the next step, we see, okay, my denominators are the same, so I can go ahead and subtract, and it's going to stay the same as 6. But I cannot say 3 minus 5. Those are my numerators. I can't subtract them because the 3 is bigger than the 5. So we have that saying, more on the floor, go next door. In this case, we're going to borrow from the whole number. So we're going to take away one whole and make this 3. Then our shortcut that we talked about, we're going to add the numerator and the denominator together to give us the new numerator of 9. What we're really saying here is, okay, if we took away one whole, we'd have to add back six out of six pieces. So three plus six is nine, and the denominators stay the same. The shortcut of doing that, if we don't have to add back each piece every time, is to simply add the denominator and the numerator. We're going to add them up, and that gives us the new number to subtract by. So now I can subtract my numerators. Nine minus five is... 4. If I look at my whole numbers, 3 minus 3 is 0. So there's no need to put anything there. Now, this is not in its simplest terms. We can divide both of these numbers by using the greatest common factor. And this, again, you may know this just right off the top of your head, but if we look at the factors of 4, it's the numbers we multiply together to get 4. The factors of 6 are the numbers that we multiply together to get 6. What is the biggest one they have in common? 2. So that means both the numerator and the denominator can be divided by 2 and made smaller. So 4 divided by 2 is, I'm sorry, 2. And 6 divided by 2 is 3. So our final answer here is 2 thirds. Now, please, as I'm going, if you have any questions, just ask and stop me if you're unsure how I got an answer. Are we ready to move on to number three? Okay, so number three, the estimate is nine. That could stay nine then. Three and seven-eighths, is that closest to three, three and a half, or four? 
4. And 9 minus 4 is 5. So we're hoping that our answer is somewhere close to the whole number of 5. So we're going to go ahead and start this problem here. We have 9 minus 3 and 7 eighths. Well, in this case, it's a little different because we don't have a fraction. So what are we going to do? We're going to borrow, right? So we're going to borrow the 9 and make it an 8. How do I know what fraction I want to use? Well, if I want it to have the same new, or I'm sorry, the same denominator, I'm going to make it 8 because that's going to make my life easier. Now I don't have to find a common denominator. How many pieces out of 8 would be one whole? 8. 8 out of 8 would be one whole. So 8 and 8 eighths is another way of writing 9 because 8 eighths equals one whole. We add it back to 8, we would get 9, but now we can subtract it. So the denominators stayed the same. My board stopped working. There we go. So the denominator stays the same. It's 8. 8 minus 7 is 1, and 8 minus 3 is 5. So I get 5 and 1 eighth. Is that close to my estimate of 5? Yes. So I know that my answer is reasonable. This way, it's a similar one in number 5 for you to work on. Okay, I'm going to do one more with you. This way you have your examples for homework. So we're just going to go to the next problem for number 4. So for number 4, the estimate 2 and 1 sixth, is that closest to 2? Two and a half or three? Two. Because two and a half would be four out of eight pieces. So this is closest to two. What about one and two sevenths? Again, probably two. I would say two. It could be one and a half. Again, it's an estimate, so it's totally up to you. Could you answer my door, please? So I don't have enough room over here. I'm actually going to do this up on the left-hand side here. So I'm going to just write this problem. And again, if you need scratch paper to take home with you, just please make sure you bring um, all your work back. So we're going to have 2 and 1 eighth minus 2, I'm sorry, 2 and 1 eighth minus two, 1 and 2 sevenths. Step 1, what is the least common multiple of 8 and 7? What is the first number they have in common? Asani? 42 they do not have in common. Oh, 22 is not. Anaya? Oh, yeah, wrong question four. I did question seven. It's all right. I'll do seven. I'll go with it. Sorry. Yes, Sakai. 56. So we're going to go with 56 here. It's a bigger denominator, but that's okay. It's the first number they have in common. So 8 times 7 gave us 56. So 1 times 7 is 7. 7 times 8 gave us 56. So 2 times 8 gives us 16. So... We have the denominator here of 56. We can't take 16 out of 7, right? So we're going to go next door. We're going to borrow. 2 is going to become 1. Then we're going to add up. So 56 plus 7 equals 63. There we go. 63. So now we're going to say 63 minus 16. More on the floor. So again, and if you need help, you can always write it on your scratch paper and do it this way, if that makes more sense. So the numbers are right next to each other. More on the floor. Go next door. Get 10 more. And we get 47 over 56. Oh, I see why our estimate's wrong. I was looking at this going, why is our estimate wrong? Because 1 and 2 sevenths was closest to 1. 
sorry. So the estimate here is 1. That's why I knew I made a mistake somewhere because 47 over 56 is really close to 1. It's not really close to 0. So that's a good way to know how to check your work. When I said 2 sevenths round to 0, I rounded the, I forgot to add in the whole number. So we get 1 as our estimate and 47 over 56 as our final answer. So even though those numbers are bigger, it is okay. Is there any other one you guys would like me to do for homework tonight? Yes. Number 11. Let's take a look at number 11. During his first vest vet visit, Pedro's puppy weighed six and one eighth pounds. On his second visit, he weighed nine and one sixteenth pounds. How much weight did he gain between the visit? So in this case, even though six and one eighth comes first, we have to write nine and one sixteenth first because that's our larger number. Then we're going to subtract it from his initial weight, which was six and one eighth. So what is the common denominator for 16 and 8? Go ahead, Aslani. 16. So since 16 stayed the same here, 1 could stay the same. How did I go from 8 to 16? I multiplied by 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. So again, it's another one where we're going to have to regroup because the denominator stayed the same at 16. But when I go to subtract, I can't take 2 out of 1. The number on the bottom is bigger, so I'm going to borrow from the 9. I'm going to make it an 8. I'm going to add up. 16 plus 1 gives me the new numerator of 17. So now 17 minus 2 is 15, and 8 minus 6 is 2. So the puppy gained 2 and 5. I'm sorry, 15 sixteenths of a pound. Any other questions? No? Okay, 